to the side. You will end up with a divot here. You'll have this divot right there. Can you see that? Can you see that? If you don't strip it that direction and you don't scissor from the top to the bottom, but you start up here, all of a sudden you're going to notice that you have this funny looking divot at the bottom. You see how that looks? That looks a little weird. Okay, so you don't want to carve this out. You want this, can you see, Kathy? Yeah. So you don't want that hair cut out of there. You want it to be, you want it to go off the bat in a smooth line. You don't want any sharp angles. Okay, so if you're stripping to the side, you won't actually, see the hair in the back will blend and go right into there. And if you find that it's very fuzzy back here, again, you can take your thin knife and you can rake. You can rake in this direction. Because the fuzzies have to come off of there. That's all undercoat. And that'll make it nice and smooth. And see so you see how it's real fuzzy in there. So I just strip, I just basically I'm combing with this. I use my stripping knife more the, to smooth the, out the undercoat. Okay, I don't know if you can see the difference there to that. Just a little that I did. Okay, what do you do here? Well, that's the most sensitive area. Sometimes they won't let you strip in this area. They don't really like it. Males and females. Males and females, particularly the females. But if you put your hand underneath the brace and, and just rest the testicles like that, you can, you can strip back here. They're pretty, they're pretty good about it. But that particular area right in here, I often will scissor if they really give me a fit. I try to strip as much as I can until they really just can't stand it any longer. And then I'll just take these thinning scissors and I'll just smooth that little area off. Right in there. And they, and they don't mind that. You see how that looks? Well, there is, if you'll notice that there's this little swirl here on both sides. It depends on the actual dog. Okay, you have a dog that's real high on leg. You want to bring that down lower. But if you have a dog that's had a flea and it's chewed part of this and its testicles are exposed, you better leave a little bit more to cover. Okay, till that hair grows back in. So it depends. You just have to look at the individual dog. If you have if you have a really, if this is nice down here and this is all covered, this hair is covered in here, you can go down a little lower if you like. You could actually go down right into that, into those two little colics, into those two little swirls. And then to smooth it up, you can take these and you can just tip the wispies. Now remember that I, what I do may not be what somebody else does. Somebody else may tell you, oh, she scissored that. Well, it just depends on how you feel comfortable in doing it and how cooperative your dog is. Just remember, you should strip most of it if they'll let you. If, they would, if he would let me strip this entire area, I probably would. And at home, I might be able to do a little more than I can here. Yes. Yes. Let me walk around over here. Okay, now you can see. I'll go this direction on this side. You see I'm pulling it to the side. I like it to the side. Now, if you have a dog, if you have a dog that doesn't have this nice fullness here, if you have a dog with no meat on his bone, you're going to have to leave a lot more hair here. You're going to have to build this up to give the impression of, you know, of fullness. And then this area would be, this area would be clean, 
but you'd have a lot more hair here, you see. Okay, on both sides. You see a dog like that. Um, but with his nice broad rear and high tail set, I can I can clean that off and show the judge, look. Look at this, look at this rear. I don't have to keep hair on it. So I'll go this direction with my stripping stone. And then you see this whitish stuff, this undercoat. So then I'll take my fine knife and I'll just comb with it. Gently comb with it. Take out that undercoat and the hair will lay smoother. Okay? Now you still see some wispies up here? Okay, you can strip some, but if it looks like you're getting too narrow at the base, then you're going to have to, excuse me, you're going to have to scissor that a little bit more, just a little bit more right there or right here, and blend those hairs right down so that that's a smooth, smooth line there. Okay? And, and then... Remember, always put the dog down and let him run around a while and then put him back. Yeah, shake it out. It may be calm perfectly and when he runs around for 15 minutes, you say, oh, look, there's this big thing sticking out here. Then you have to deal with that. Because what happens if you take him in the show ring, you can be guaranteed in 15 minutes he'll be sticking out in the show ring too. So, Okay, now that's basically how you do the tail. You blend the tail into uh, the buttocks. Now, on the back of the leg, I, I see lots of people leaving what I consider is way too much hair on the hocks. If you have too much hair on these hocks, and it's sticking in this way, or it's twisting up this way, when the dog moves and you see flopping hair, you'll see this foot. And the foot may be coming out true, but with all the hair off the side, it looks like the dog's throwing his foot this way. And it may not... You, what you want to show the judge is this dog can move well. This dog can, can move true. So take that hair off the back of the hock. Show them that he's got a shelf on his hock, you see? This dog has angulation. Can you see where my finger rests? When you come down here, you want to, feel, you want to, feel, you want to be able to feel that stop there. There's, a, there's that, that shelf on the bone. Because if the dog has angulation up here, it'll also be angulated back here. And the reason, the reason we worry about angulation, it's like a spring. If you have no spring, you get a very straight movement. If you have a spring, you see, you're going to move. He's going he's to move out better. He can cover more ground more efficiently. But if you have, if you have a dog that's very straight, and, and you don't feel any spring here, any angulation, any bend of stifle, the dog is only going to go chut, 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 like this instead of, because he won't have the spring. Okay. So what you want to show the judge is that this dog has, this dog has some, some angulation in the rear. Okay. Um, the way I do the back hawk, I'm going to stone here somewhere. Here we go. The way I do the back hock, I stand the dog up, and I literally flip the back foot out. Now, it's very important that these hairs here on the front of the leg, that you catch that in your hand. Because if you don't, you could accidentally roll that hair around, pull that all off, and then you've got a dog that looks like that, which looks weird, okay? So, so be careful as you pull the back leg out, and you're gonna and you're gonna work on the bottom, the the pad, the foot. As you pull the leg out, be sure that you catch the hair in this hand, this front hair. Pull it forward like that and hold on to it. Then this is what you want to work on, okay? Now I'll do two ways. First of all, I take out. The dog's under, I take out some undercoat of this area because you'll find that there's a lot of fuzz in the leg still. There's undercoat on all the dogs. So I rake that out 
would take out the undercoat. Then I'll strip, then I'll strip off the back of the hock. I'll strip off the back of the hock like that. And then I do take my scissors and I do trim. I trim around the bottom of the foot. And I trim between the pads. If your dog runs on hard surfaces, you won't have to worry about toenails because he'll wear his toenails right down. If you don't run your dog on hard surfaces and it's on carpet a lot or grass a lot, you'll have to trim these rear nails. As short as you can get them, but you know the Scotties are very sensitive about their toenails. And, and sometimes to get them short, as short as you, sh as you should have them, you have to do them very frequently. Because if you only do them every other week, they will, the quick, which is on the inside of the nail, will grow longer. And then as you trim the nail, you'll catch the quick, which causes the bleeding and causes the pain and so forth. But if you keep the nail short, the quick will recede. It will grow shorter. And so as you trim the nail, you won't catch it as easily. So trim the nail frequently or use a file. Um, some people like the electric nail grinder. Um, I've always been a little bit afraid to use it because of the furnishings. I was always afraid that if I if it twisted around it would pull hair out and I would probably um, have a bald spot. But I pull this hair forward around the, the foot. I'll see I still have some more fuzzies here. And I'll trim those around the foot, like so. Okay. Well, normally if you start with a young puppy, they're used to it, fairly used to it. And you have to, um, you have to sort of desensitize them. When they behave, you have to, you know, say, oh, you're really good, and you give them a treat, and they'll, and they'll, what's it? Aren't we past time? Okay. All right. Um, okay, on the side, I haven't really talked about the front of the leg. This hair here also has to be stripped. The best way to do is to just hold your, hold the dog's leg, pull this hair down, and pick the longest hairs out. I just would pick these long hairs. What happens when you take the hair out is new hair will start to grow, and you'll have multiple lengths on the thigh here, in the, and, the, and off the stifle. You'll have multiple lengths. If you haven't trimmed this dog in eight weeks or ten weeks or eight months, and all this hair is exact same length, it takes longer to get it into a graduated. In that case, you can, I mean, some people will scissor this, but remember that you must also be picking. You've got to, this, this is to be renewed just like this up here. Well, yes, you could. Mm -hmm. Yes, yes. Some people do that. If you, if you, if you, if you want, if you have a dog that it hasn't been worked on for a long, long time, and all this hair is the same length, and you want to put it in the show ring in two months, you'll have no choice. You either have to wait for it, or you have to put the scissors to it, which you really shouldn't do. But if you have to, you have to. And uh, you know, if the rest of the dog's in coat, and this is the only part you have. You know, you can, you can do it, but remember that you're really not supposed to. The purists don't ever, and never use it just as a shortcut. Um, but in emergency, when emergency, you may have to use the scissors. The other thing that I do that some people would disagree with, I suppose, is this is wispy here. And even though I've pulled it, I have still varying lengths. <sighs> remember some of the grooming we've done as breeders and owners, handlers, we have to compete with the handlers, and the handlers, if they use nothing but scissors, you have to do some things, because 
judges sometimes think that the handlers set the trends, which is not the way it should be. But if that's the case, and they want a smooth look, and they don't like this, flopping off of there, which probably will give him a funky looking movement anyway.